Hey, hello there. So today's Lee Coding Challenge question. It's called Uncross the Lines. Um, it's uh, pretty much uh, similar to the pretty much the same question as the uh, very classic uh, longest common subsequence uh, question, uh, which is a, a DP question. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's look at the, this question. Uh, we have two sequence of integer numbers a and b. We want to write these two sequence of numbers on two separate uh, horizontal lines, maybe on a whiteboard or a piece of paper. Once the numbers are written there, we should try to connecting lines between the numbers. Uh, we connect one number from A and one number from B uh, using a straight line. And uh, the numbers being connected are of the same value. We want to connect as many uh, lines as possible. The only caveat is that the lines that we draw shouldn't uh, intersect with each other. And this intersection also includes the endpoints. That means we shouldn't have uh, two lines connecting to the same number. So every number has to, uh, can be used at the most of once. This also leads to a property that, uh, uh, since that, let's for for example this example 142 and 124. Uh, once we figure out uh, the best way to connect uh, the first uh, pair of numbers to, you know, basically connecting them, for the remainder of the problem. Uh, all we need to know is that uh, we use the one number from A, use the one number from B, and we got an optimal number of connection with those case to be one. Uh, the, for the remainder consideration, we don't need to worry about uh, what numbers are actually connected and uh, how they connected uh, prior to uh, you know your, your smaller problem to the right-hand side. Um, it's a little bit ambiguous. I guess the, the, another uh, better example, I guess, is uh, once we used the uh, once we connected this four and four. If we have a, a bunch of other numbers after that, um, all we need to know for to summarize this uh, prior two connection kind of case is that we use the two numbers from A, we use the three number from B. The best the number of connections in that case is two. So. Uh, for the remainder, you know, how many numbers that we have from B, A and B. Um, if we, in, you know, say that uh, the optimal solution is built upon the optimal solution for the two and three case, uh, you know, this could be summarized uh, to be, you know, three number summarization. The number we used from A, the number we used from B, and the optimal connection uh, in that case. And the remainder, it's pretty much the same problem of a smaller size. Um, yeah. So, uh, so let's uh, look talk about this uh, a little bit more formularically after we see this uh, example. I'm going to put this number here as a reference, uh, so that uh, thinking about this might be a little bit easier. Uh, so for this case, um, yeah, let me actually add two more number there. Um, I equal to two j equal to 3, meaning that uh, we use the two number from A and three number from B. Uh, this is A and this is B. Uh, I, I points here, j points to here, and uh, we know the maximum. Uh, we know basically f2 uh, and 3 is equal to 2. So this f, f i and j here basically means the number of uh, um, maximum number of uh, uncrossed uh, lines between uh, A from the beginning towards uh, I's location and B from beginning towards J's location. So it's a, it, it's a arbitrary kind of a sub, a sub problem that can be solved by calling this, uh, passing this uh, boundary I and J to this function. If we have this function all figured out, then to solve this problem, what we need is just to call this function on a dot size and b dot size to pass the full range into this function. Uh, you will be able to give, an, give us the optimal. So uh, then uh, the detail is just to, to figure out how we're actually going to populate all those ij pair values for this function. Uh, function result. So looking at uh, this here, uh, if we want to consider something like uh, uh, maybe like uh, f, uh, what, what else can we know here? Just going to enumerate uh, with a couple of cases. So we know that the one one is going to be one. Uh, that's because a1 and b1 they are the same. So the best that we can do by using only one number from a and one number from b is to connect them. So f11 is equal to one. 
F12 is uh, one number from A and two number from B. Uh, so we can connect the one one and be done with it. So it's uh, it's one. F21 uh, again it's uh, it's also one. Easy to see. Uh, F22 is uh, one. F23, we already see it's uh, the current realization of the connections, it's two. Um, on the contrary kind of a choice in terms, in terms of connecting two to a full four, we have F32 is equal to two. So let, let's look at uh, uh, F33. Uh, how can we uh, get here? One way we can get here is to, to choose not to use one of the last number from uh, either A or B. So uh, that leads us to, uh, if we choose not to use the very last element from A, the third element from A, uh, the solution is going to basically just be carried over from F23. Uh, that's uh, choose not to use A3. Or it could be uh, F32. That's when we let me put this as comments, I guess. And uh, it could also be F32. That's when we choose not to use uh, B3. And uh, it could also be uh, F22 plus. Uh, one potentially that's when we can connect a3 and b3 uh, otherwise uh, it would just be f22 and 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 it actually doesn't make sense because f23 and f32 are guaranteed to be larger than or equal to f22 so we, we don't even to need to worry about that if we couldn't add one to it the only case that the f22 uh, can be useful is that uh, when we can actually add one that's when a3 and b3 are the same number so uh, yeah so in that case f23 and f32 might be uh, smaller than uh, when we actually increment one to the f22 so in our example here uh, we see um, f23 is 2 f32 is also 2 f22 is 1 um, and uh, f33 uh, a3 b3 are actually not the same so um, so let's put this uh, as the uh, conversion this to integer so we don't need to uh, comment this anymore it, it become quite obvious um, so this is uh, 2 and 2 and this is uh, 1 so obviously f33 is going to be um, f33 f3, f3 is going to be uh, maximum among those three So, so which is going to be uh, two. If we look at the F44, um, F, maybe F, F34. Uh, just going to do one more example, I guess. Uh, if we look at the F34, it's going to be the maximum between two four, uh, which is going to be two four is two. Uh, 3 3 which we know is 2 just calculated and uh, f2 3 potentially add 1 uh, but uh, a3 and uh, b4 are actually not the same so uh, that that uh, f2 3 is going to be 2 so f3 4 is going to be 2 um, so th that's pretty much uh, the recursive relationship uh, to according to a, a little bit more formularically it will be um, yeah, just this. Fij is going to be the maximum among three things. Uh, Fi minus one, j, Fij uh, minus one, and uh, Fi minus one, j minus one, uh, plus uh, whether we have the Ai and Bj to be the same. 
So, so actually, uh, AI and BJ here is the uh, should be minus one because it's uh, uh, in the in the notation here. I'm using uh, one as the index, starting index, but uh, you know, array to access that uh, it's a zero index. So it's i minus one and j minus one. Uh, so, so that's the uh, transition function, and the base case is that uh, uh, it's going to be just zero all the way. The ba base case basically means either i or j is zero. Uh, that physically it, it just means one of the sequence is totally empty, and uh, then there is no number from one of the lines we can connect to. There, if there is no line, no number, there is no line. So it's uh, the base case is just zero. Uh, if we Looking at this as the uh, a top down kind of a approach, uh, we, we, we use some memorization uh, to, to do the recursion to solve this problem. Uh, if we do the bottom up approach, it will be uh, to populating a 2D table, two dimensional table with the maybe like a rows being the i's and the column be the j's, and the cell values be um, fij. So just to quickly demonstrate uh, what this is going to look like at this table. So the base case is uh, the first row and the first column are all going to be zero, meaning that uh, if a has nothing, uh, that's when i equal to zero. Uh, a has nothing. Uh, the no matter how many uh, numbers we ch we can make choice about uh, from b, uh, there's going to be zero lines. Uh, the same for um, if b is totally empty. Then we look at uh, every cell i j pair here uh, i equal to i equal to one and b, j equal to one. Uh, we look at uh, the adjacent three number. That's uh, uh, the uh, previous row same column, same row previous column, the immediately diagonal uh, in the top left the diagonal value, and take the maximum among those three. When for the diagonal, we're actually going to test uh, whether a i and b j, uh, if in, in terms of uh, uh, a i minus one and b b b j minus one are, are, are the same number. So in our example, uh, that's one and one. So we have uh, uh, the the one here is uh, this diagonal zero plus one. Um, for i equal to one and b equal to uh, uh, j equal to two, i equal to one, j equal to two. We are using one number from A and two number from B. It's obviously that uh, uh, we can only have one there. But uh, in terms of uh, looking at the, the formula here, we look to our left, it's a one. We look up, it's a zero. We took look to the diagonal left, it's a zero. And uh, we then look at uh, the first number from A and the second number from B. Uh, that's one and two. They are not the same, so we couldn't add one number to the diagonal one. Uh, so we just take the maximum. Uh, among one zero zero, which is going to be one. Uh, similarly, we have another one there. For the second uh, row here, we can use two number from A and one number from B. Um, so we look uh, look around. We have zero zero one. For this zero row, we need to look at uh, if the second number from A and the first number from B are the same. The second number from A is four. The first number from B is one. They are not the same. So we couldn't add one to the diagonal. Uh, so we are taking the maximum between uh, among 0, 0, and 1. Uh, so it's obviously a 1 there. Uh, it's the same, so a similar story with 2 and 2. When we look at uh, 2 and 3, we can use 2 number from A, 3 number from B. Uh, so since that the 8, A2, the second number from A and the third number from B are the same, we can actually add 1 to this diagonal. So it's uh, doing maximum between 1, 1, and 2. So it's 2 there. Uh, you, you get the idea. We basically, for how many i value and j values we can have, we we just uh, populate this 2D table and return the um, bottom bottom right uh, number. That's now our uh, answer to this uh, question. Uh, if we populate in this table, it will be the bottom up approach. 
And uh, in fact, when we look at the, the transition here, uh, and also when we do the uh, menu kind of work through about how to populate this value, we look left, look uh, on the top, and uh, uh, immediately top left. So all we need is the previous row. Uh, we don't need anything that's beyond. When we actually work with the row two here, we don't need anything from row zero. When we work on the row three, populating the number there, column by column, we don't need anything that's uh, prior, including to row one. So we can reduce the space requirement by only keeping track of the previous row and the current row. So that's a, that's a little bit saving in the space. So overall, we need to populate this, this table. So it's uh, n multiplied by n, the two lands added together, uh, multiplied by together. But for space, it's going to be two, two rows, uh, which is going to be, uh, if, if we uh, do a little bit uh, filter to have the uh, row be the smaller among those two, it will be you know, just a two multiplied by the uh, minimum among those uh, two lenses. So uh, that's pretty much the time and space analysis for this DP solution. Uh, we do a little bit of optimization on the space if we only keep two rows. And uh, I guess with some more comp uh, more uh, detailed work, uh, you might be able to figure out uh, uh, how to just use one row. But uh, uh, I guess it might be easy to make mistake if we want to go uh, really to compress that much. So yeah, so I'm gonna just code this uh, code this up uh, very quickly. All right. So I'm gonna move this up by. So give myself some space. I'm gonna grab the number of rows and the number of columns. We're just gonna be the size plus one because we've had one row with uh, zeros and one column with zeros as the base case. Um, and uh, we're gonna have the row objects, uh, which is gonna be a vector of integers. Previous row, which is of size, number of columns, uh, and the initial value are zero, and uh, current. The, we're going to have a for loop for each process this row by row. In each row, we're going to process that column by column. So it's a nested loop. So we're gonna have a little bit kind of a row swapping here, alternative between the previous and current. So when we work on the new row, we're gonna uh, assign this uh, current. Uh, uh, we're gonna make a copy of the previous row as the new current, and after we're processing the uh, populating, updating the values there, we're gonna uh, set this current to be the new previous. Uh, in the end, we should return the. Uh, current with a uh, number of columns uh, uh, subtract by one, right? Yeah, the, we got number of columns. So the end, uh, the index for the last element is this. Um, or, or we can just do dot back, right? Uh, so here, it's uh, it's pretty much just uh, use this uh, updating rule here. Um, so it's the maximum among three things. Current at the, this column value is going to be the maximum among three things. Uh, the first thing is the same column previous row, i minus 1j, which is going to be previous column, uh, previous row, same column. The second thing is the uh, same row previous column, so it's current uh, c minus 1. And the last thing is the uh, diagonal, diagonal, uh, immediate to the diagonal left. Which is uh, previous c minus one, and uh, we want to add one if we have this uh, uh, these two numbers uh, corresponding number from a and b are the same. So that's the uh, updating rule, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much the code. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, 
yeah, that's that's pretty much the the bottom up uh, approach uh, about DP solution with uh, uh, two rows space. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's the code.